ultimate rivals the court is Bitfry Game Studios' next attempt at futuristic sci-fi sports action. Today, we're going to have an in-depth look at the game's performance and a bit of the game's history, I suppose. Back in December 2019, during the Game Awards, Bitfry Game Studios announced Ultimate Rivals The Rink, which was all about crossover action hockey. At the same time, it was also confirmed that they would be bringing us another game in the same universe, all based around basketball. The Rink was built in around 8 months. However, I read that the court's development team is about double the size and took around 15 months to develop. A very condensed time frame for a game of this caliber. It was actually supposed to release in late 2020, but was delayed. I don't know the reason for this, but perhaps it was with the difficulty on licensing or the athletes. You see, the previous game had 60 plus athletes from different sports, and the court wanted to expand on this. It now has more than 130 licensed athletes from a range of sports. We're talking NHL, NBA, WNBA, MLB, NFL Players Association, and US Women's Soccer National Team players. Plus, more will be added from WWE. Its gameplay approach is similar to the rink, being over-the-top stylized sports action. Think NBA Jam meets Street Fighter. You still have all the special moves too that you can activate to get an advantage over your players, and it's awesome. Really, this game is not going for a realistic approach like NBA 2K21 on Arcade. That being said, the game expands on the original in a few areas. For example, instead of the camera being over the top of the players, it now follows a more side-on-camera perspective, similar to NBA 2K21 on Apple Arcade. I think I prefer this camera angle, as you can see more of the details of the court and the sci-fi backdrops behind. The only issue I had with it is that the camera sometimes got caught behind some random object in the background, but it was so rare, to the point that I expect most of you won't even notice. There are also two new modes. Gauntlet mode has been added, where you can play through bracketed tourneys to quickly unlock more athletes. And the game has a training mode to hone your skills. This is something that NBA 2K21 is missing, and it's really good to see here. The game contains a few more maps to play on, and more will come in future updates. Right now you can play on City Hall, Cape Carnival, Times Square, and Training Map. The UI is also cleaner. If you're playing with the touchscreen controls, you'll notice the buttons player names and their icons take up significantly less space on the screen. The touchscreen buttons are very accessible for passing, shooting and using turbo. And as you'd expect, the game has controller support and it works great with one. I just wish the team would have added controller rumble support. I think it would really add to the experience, you know, your controller will vibrate when you score a goal or when you use your special moves, turbo, and so on. I would love for this to be added, please. It was never announced, but the court has partial keyboard support on iPad too. It works really just like the Mac version, supporting continuous key down events. The only downside is that the touch UI won't disappear when using a keyboard. Hopefully this can be fixed. Do I suggest that you play with a keyboard? Probably not. It's much easier to play with a controller, but I'm glad that it's there if you want to use it. At the end of the day, no matter what device you play on, the game is very accessible. Once again, the court was created in Unreal Engine. Bitfry told me they are mostly using Unreal Engine 4's default post-processing stack. Unreal Engine is one of the most common game engines that developers use for 3D games on Apple Arcade. It helps to optimize a game's graphical detail and frame rate for a range of Apple devices. Bitfry Games managed to get Ultimate Rivals The Court to take up only 2.39 gigabytes of memory. 
This means that older devices with only 2 gigabytes of memory can run the game too. I can't test how the game performs on every Apple device out there, but I can show you the most recent Apple devices. If your device is not shown in this video, you can check out the link in the video description to see what frame rate your device supports. Every iPhone and iPad out there is apparently targeting their native resolution. For example, on our iPhone 12 Pro, that is 2532 by 1170, iPhone SE 1334 by 750, and an 11 inch iPad Pro from 2021, 2388 by 1668. While Bitfry Studio said the game targets 60 FPS on most new mobile devices, this isn't entirely accurate. Some devices it is sticking to 60 FPS, and in the frame time which shows how long the GPU spent doing one frame, it is a straight line. That is an indication of good optimization. However, on some devices it's not always 60 FPS and the frame time is not always a straight line. This is the case on our iPhone 12 Pro, which is kind of weird. Perhaps Bitfry don't need to target native resolution on these devices, so they can better optimize the frame rate. Look, it's not terrible performance, mind you, and is considerably better optimization than most other 3D games on Apple Arcade or on mobile in general. Apple HD and Apple TV 4K 1st and 2nd gen all target 30 FPS though, which is disappointing. For me, I found this lower frame rate much less enjoyable, as the movement in this game is very fast paced, the higher frame rate is needed, plus the graphical quality is not nearly as nice. Perhaps this downgrade in quality is because these devices have limited system memory and just can't handle a high frame rate. Surprisingly, Mac performance was the worst. Let's have a look at my 13 inch MacBook Pro with the Apple M1 chip. As you can see, the frame rate is not always consistent. This is weird to me as the game is a native Apple Silicon application it isn't running through Rosetta. What about my 2020 5K iMac with an 8GB graphics card? Well, the game tries to target 60fps, but it's not always consistent. It can drop during these cinematic shots or when scoring a goal. It's not nearly as bad as on Apple M1, but I still think it could be a lot better here too. One reason for this mixed performance on Mac could be that the game doesn't offer any custom graphic options. It looks like the game is running at native resolution here. I can understand why there are no custom graphic options on mobile devices due to a lack of virtual memory, but this isn't the case on Mac, which has such memory. On Mac, there should be an option under the settings menu that allows you to lower the resolution and maybe the graphics quality. This performance on both of these Macs should be considerably better. Have you played Ultimate Rivals The Court on Apple Arcade yet? If so, on what device? How is it performing for you? What do you think of the game overall compared to The Rink or NBA 2K21 if that's a fair comparison? Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe and turn on notifications to stay up to date with everything Apple Arcade related. My name is Stewie and thanks for watching.